some film clips from the movie Interstellar to illustrate ideas of general relativity in connection with this 100th uh, anniversary of general relativity. Is it possible to turn off these lights that are shining on the screen? Uh, and so I want to begin by introducing to you uh, the key people with whom I worked on the movie Interstellar. Most of you will see them talking about me, but for this purpose, it's, uh, I wanted to introduce them to you to give you some sense of the close collaboration that we had between me as a scientist and the filmmakers on this film. So this is a preamble to my talk about Interstellar. Pioneers, we've barely begun. Our greatest accomplishments cannot be behind us. Because our destiny lies above us. The initial emphasis for the, the project being to say, why not examine real possibilities? Why not actually look at the real science there? Luckily, we had Kip. Kip is the foremost authority on all things gravitational. They're all really the kind of safe inside here. Scatter some of the bad light scattering off of the surface of ripple motion. Neither wormholes nor black holes have been depicted in any Hollywood movie in the way that they actually would appear. This is the first time the depiction began with Einstein's general relativity equations. The visual effects department on the Paul Franklin and everybody at Double Negative took Kip's mathematical data and they created real visual representations of what a black hole is meant to look like. The collaboration has produced visualization of things which nobody had ever managed to do before. You know, we potentially may have discovered a couple of new things that were lurking there inside the mathematics, inside the physics. I worked out the equations that would enable him to do the gravitational lens thing. So you have light that comes from the star behind the black hole. It may come in, go around the black hole several times, and then come to the camera. And so you wind up with uh, several different images of the star. The black hole warps the space so much, it just looks like you're looking at a strange sort of funnel in the sky, with this intensely black circle in the middle of it. But the gravity of the black hole draws in all the matter from the surrounding universe. And this spins out into a giant disk around the central sphere. And as it whirls in towards the center, the gas gets hotter and hotter. And this thing, the accretion disk around it, shines brilliantly. And then we found that if you then render this whole thing and visualize it all through this extraordinary gravitational lens, the gravity twists this glowing disk of gas into weird shapes and you get this extraordinary sort of rainbow of fire across the top of the black hole. And I saw this disk wrap up over the black hole and under the black hole. Yeah, I'd known it intellectually, but knowing it intellectually is completely different than seeing it, than feeling it. We had determined when we started down this road that if it didn't look like something that would be comprehensible to the audience, we would have to manipulate it in some way. But what we found was, as long as we didn't change the point of view too much of the camera position, we'd get some very understandable tactile imagery from those equations. They were constantly surprised. You know, spoke to a maximum that the truth can be strange in the fiction. We're going to write several technical papers about this. One aimed at the astrophysics community, and then something for the, the computer graphics community, saying, here are some 